Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh. So come get some. Cromcon! Cromcon! Hey, we want to shout out to our sponsors, Daytona Beach Comic Con. If you are a fan of comic books, if you're a fan of comic book conventions, and if you like meeting comic book creators and getting comics and comic related stuff, then you need to make your plans to attend Daytona Beach Comic Con. This year's show is September 7th and 8th. Silverline will be there, so you should make your plans to be there too. We'll see you there. If you like comics and find yourself in the Orlando, Florida area, I mean, doesn't everyone come to Orlando at some point in time to see the House of Mouse? But when you're here, you need to make it a point to visit Coliseum of Comics, especially the one on East Colonial Drive. They carry Silverline Comics, even a limited edition Coliseum of Comics version of our comics. So, when you go, be sure to ask for Silverline Comics and tell them we sent you. OCD stands for Orlando Collector Deviants. OCD, Stephen Trish. They're a family of geeks who promote geek things, particularly those around the Orlando, Florida area. They're big supporters of Silverline, and we think you should be supporters of theirs, too. Go give them some love. If you are an independent comic book maker and you need to get your independent comics made, you need to look no further than Kablam! Kablam Digital Printing. They print our books, and they do a bang-up job. They're not only trusted by Silverline, but many, many independent comic book makers. Head on over to Kablam.com and see for yourself just how easy it is to have your comic printed by them. And tell them Silverline sent you. Hi, this is Tim TK, host of That Silverline Show on Tuesday. Join us at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Tuesday night as we discuss pop culture and the joys of making comics. Hi, I'm Barb Kelber, co-host of Silverline's Wednesday Wham. Join us each Wednesday night as we discuss comics, literature, movies, and anything else that may catch our attention. I'm Roland Mann, and I host Silverline's Silver Sunday. Join me every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we make mine Silverline. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday night, and that means it's Silver Lines Wednesday, Wham! I'm your humble co-host, Mr. Dean Zachary. He's enjoying his evening. We hope he has a lovely evening away from uh, this craziness. And I'm joined by my good friend and shipmate, Rory Boyle, co-author there, uh, Empress of Inks, Barb Kalberg, who is inking and coloring right now on uh, her, her next story. Coloring, and we are all joined by Mr. Steve Wilhite. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Before we get too far into uh, chatting with Steve, a uh, big thank you to the Daytona Beach Comic Book Convention mm -hmm. folks there down in Florida, down in the land. I had Deland in my head. I'm so sorry for everybody that lives down there. The land, Florida. Uh, beautiful, humid Florida for a great convention. Uh, There's a great crew from uh, from Silver line there we had a wonderful weekend and um i also cannot forget that we have a kickstarter campaign running right now i'm going to say that right now uh if you need to click over there keep this tab open so you can hear our voices but go check out uh silver line on kickstarter the links are everywhere that you find uh silver line on facebook and uh link linkedin and instagram and Right now, watching on YouTube, I'm sure the links are everywhere, silverlinecomics.com as well. We'll get back to that um, as we talk. But our guest uh, is connected to our Kickstarter campaign because it is a very, very cool uh, campaign right now. It's our horror extravaganza for mm -hmm. comics in one Kickstarter. And within that four, we have the scary book, which is why Steve Wilhite is here to chat with us how are you sir hi good thank you and uh where are you geographically are, uh so we know what time it is and uh, <laughs> place I'm not in time here uh it's six o'clock here but um i'm right on the oregon idaho border i live oh, okay. in oregon uh, ontario oregon so yeah just right across the river from idaho that's out in the kind of the high desert it's beautiful i've been through there i think a couple times not I had to look at a map uh, driving across to Alaska and back home to New York and oh, then yeah. up from Oklahoma and through Colorado and up and over and then zagged over <laughs> into Oregon. That is a very interesting part of the world that uh, I don't think a lot of people, when they think of Oregon, realize that like that, what, 
two thirds of the state is not like mm. the other side of the coastal right. uh, state, but it's, it's, it's a really cool part of the world out there. Um, so tell us, how did you get connected with Silverline? Um, how did you get roped into this uh, crazy bunch of people and um, get on this uh, scary book project? I think it was probably in, I, I think it was 1991. I, I, I believe I met Roland at San Diego and gave him a, like a sample book that I had made at Kinko's. Um, just a little, you know, eight and a half by 11 folded in half had, you know, shrunk down pages that I'd drawn. And I, I think I was giving those out and I think Roland got in touch with me. And then next thing you know, I'm, you know, I've got a script for, you know, the scary book and, I was absolutely terrified. Had <laughs> no idea what to do. I, I had, you know, I thought I knew what I, you know, needed to do. But, you know, you get a, a script that, you know, wants you to draw things that, you know, you don't normally draw before getting a comic job. You know, it's like, what, I got to draw cars now, <laughs> you know, and I've got to draw people in cars you know, and, you know, the inside of a diner, what do you mean I got to draw the inside of a diner? You know, it was, it was a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, were you, when, when you talked to Roland, were you expecting um, a project like this or were you, what, what were you expecting? I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, I, I, I knew it was going to be something with humor, um, but I really wasn't sure. And then I, then I got some character design or, you know, character um, descriptions and then had to come up with some designs for that. And I think I, I don't know if Roland was relaying those back to Sidney Williams, but um, but yeah, that's how the characters got developed. I don't know whether that had any impact on the story or not, but, but yeah. Did you have... Um a a horror genre in mind is that something you uh had done before or was this just um uh, roland's idea give it a try i think it was roland's idea <laughs> <laughs> i had always thought i was going to draw superheroes and yeah. now i can't imagine but uh yeah i i think you know that's on roland <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think he, Roland is very good at finding uh, finding what people are, are good at, and I, I think that's his one of his gifts. So let's yeah. uh, I'm let's glad back. for it. I yeah, mean, it's got me my start. That's um. Let, let, so let's back up. So before okay. 1991, uh, you already had uh, enough to make a little bit of a portfolio and felt experienced enough to, uh, or maybe didn't quite feel experienced enough, but decided to anyway. I think is what Take everybody that's what does. Most yeah. of us do right. Yeah, yeah, just just go for it and. Um, so make it till you make it. Right. right. <laughs> um, with and, everything. And, and get that mm -hmm. thick skin. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell us about yourself, um, how you got into drawing and stuff you like mm -hmm. to draw. And uh, if, if it was comic books or, or, or go for it, I'll stop talking. Yeah. Okay. Um, my, my family, um, there were a lot of artists in our family. My mom, uh, my grandma and my uncle Roger, um, they all, you know, they, they drew, um, and I just kind of followed along and then, you know, I enjoyed it and kept going with it. Um, but I, I always thought that I, I wanted to draw like daily comics, you know, daily strips. Um, cause I was really at the time, that's mostly what I got, you know, we, we, I, we'd get comic books every now and then, but it wasn't, you know, like the daily paper, you know, and I could go in there and I can read, you know, something back then kind of funny and interesting. But I always wanted to do that. And I don't know, um, sometime when I was like 12, I decided, no, I think I think comic books are fun. And I would copy, you know, I, I wouldn't trace it, but I would try to draw it as close as I could to to all my Mike Golden comments. <laughs> and, Another you know, I wanted to be Mike Golden if I could. And yeah, I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I didn't, I didn't make it either. I, I started with art and that was horrible. 
So I yeah. went to write. <laughs> I have I have a lot. Uh, oh, oh, my mom has a shoebox full of uh, artwork that. Oh, was, we're putting. We got to scan that. And put that on the show. Uh, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot of Iron Man and War Machine and <laughs> the Avengers. <laughs> I I I paused my Sega Avengers <laughs> game at one point because there was a cool scene with with vision flying like this like this and um i thought it was it was really cool and it was like what 32-bit graphics by then for Mm -hmm. for sega was it or was it a 16-bit either way so i put the paper not i didn't trace it but i put the paper up on the screen next to it and so i had a really cool Uh drawing of vision Mm -hmm. um and then i took other two but i can i can't just draw from my head i have to i I can look but they're always perspectives always you know Torsos mm-hmm. are a little elongated, yeah, and <laughs> so uh, well, yeah. I, that's why that's why I write, and I hopefully can get <laughs> can convince people to draw mm-hmm. uh, to turn my words into pictures. Um, Are writers just spurned artists? I, you know, I think there's a lot of us that say we tried, we <laughs> yeah. tried. Uh, you know what? You know who and- else tried art? Hitler, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and he just got angry but probably with this with art school and student loans and, uh, uh so steve uh so 91 you uh meet roland and you think san uh-huh. diego and um and then soon thereafter you're you're creating you're creating a scary book um yeah. and if if you can fill us in i don't know i don't even know if you know all the details what what happened with that story mm-hmm. from then and then till now uh, only the first two issues, it, it started coming out from, um, caliber press mm-hmm. and, um, the first two issues were the only ones that got published by them. And I, I blame myself for that because, you know, I was so behind on deadlines and stuff and the only the first two, I, I think the first two and part of the third book ever even got inked and then, um, it was kind of shelved. And I thought, well, that's the last thing I'll ever do. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I, I, I still feel bad about it. You know, I keep thinking, you know, maybe if I'd have got it done sooner, you know, it would have made it. But, you know, um, from there, it just sort of disappeared. And then um, I think Silverline brought it back. I can't remember. It was in the early 2000s, maybe. And um, uh, Roland sent me... A whole bunch of the well he sent me all of the unfinished pencils or just the pencils the uninked pencils and um so i was able to go in and ink the rest of it myself so i got to ink uh, about a book and a half of it and um that was kind of cool um and then they collected it and uh, released it as kind of a trade and and then now <laughs> it's a kickstarter <laughs> again hey there it is again yeah uh, the, yeah it's uh the comic that won't die it's, well that's it's fantastic i i love that it. i love that it is <laughs> well it's just perfect for our, our horror extravaganza Ooh, that's right um, the comic that we we've been trying to get clever um we've got to we've got to stand out and people put their their books up on um the various crowdfunding uh platforms and the indiegogo and kickstarter and so forth um and silverline has just had so many titles uh and i know roland's had his brain trust with barb and uh and and folks about how how we can get our titles out there because um without um you know you you can only do so much and um, being a being a small indie press uh, yeah. this, this horror extravaganza is a clever idea. It's, it's a little different mm-hmm. than some of the others, uh, no, putting f- four together. Um, people really get, um, a lot for their money, which is really cool. Yeah. What um, were the four again? So it is, uh, Twilight Grimm, uh, one through four sirens, number one and two scary book, number one and Kalos Achilles has landed. This is, I guess, technically the fifth Kalos. It's, um, mm-hmm. it's like the next chunk of the story um and it's really cool which i i this is the my refrain every time i talk about uh, kickstarter and and crowdfunding is folks get all these options um and stuff that they couldn't get before so what's cool about the kickstarter campaign and people watching tonight uh hearing your story about it started fits and starts and then we've we've, it's been revived and and now it's really coming to life uh full color and with uh with a the the rest of the scary book that's going to happen so this is just the start of it um 
Can you tell us any of the story of Scary Book? Oh, wow. Um, I haven't actually read it in a while. Uh, I think the guy's name was Marty, um, if I remember correctly. And he um, worked in a bookstore and accidentally got the scary book. And <laughs> it belonged to the devil. And um, it just proceeded to get him in trouble. So, you know, it, it's there was all this, there was intrigue in hell and there was you know, crazy stuff like, you know, an Aztec mummy and, you know, <laughs> wrestlers in a Denny's and, you know, it was crazy. <laughs> There's an, this crazy Nazi guy with um, dachshund that would attack you. And it was, it was so fun. It was, yeah. yeah. You know why dachshunds are um, cowboy dogs? Any, anybody? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-mm. Nope. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Oh, because oh. they're because, little doggies. I don't know. Because you get along, little doggy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta. I got Everybody more. Here. Collective. Oh. He's, a, he's appearing all week. Don't forget to take <laughs> your waitress. <laughs> um, I'm so not giving him any more of my money. <laughs> <laughs> So, Steve, it sounds like um, this is a bit, it's because the character, the villain looks at Lou C. Uh, Lee C. Fur. Lou C. Fur, yeah. yeah. You were right. Marty Applegate is the, the oh, I had it hero. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Crimson. So, was yeah, the Crimson girl. is is released. Um, uh, Lou C. Fur sends Crimson back to Earth uh to fetch the book with the aid of unwitting bookstore owner Marty Applegate. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, a bit of a, a goofy, scary, right? Um, yeah. Uh, humorous, yeah. scary. Um, so um, s- since then, since your your start um, with with getting this, uh, this you said Scary Book was your first comic book, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, fill us in. What's what's come after that? Um, like right after right after the Scary Book, I, I did um, – a couple one shots for Antarctic Press that <laughs> did terrible. <laughs> um, again, did terrible. Um, they were just crazy. Um, one was called Matter Baby, and uh, it was about a uh, a flying baby with a mohawk, and it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> and um, the other one was called the the aptly named Mighty Bomb, and it was about this guy that would just explode himself (laughs) in different directions with hand grenades. And it it was crazy too. And I think, I think Antarctic press sent me a box of all of those comics because I still have a big giant pile of these things. And I was giving them away (laughs) to little kids at cons. Um, Unknowing that they were explicit content. <laughs> Since then, I've I've done a bunch of indie stuff. Um, mostly, I think um, most um, notably is Fubar, the whole Fubar series. Um, they're these anthologies. The the, the first one was um, it was World War Two with zombies, and it was um, Fubar European Theater of the Damned. And um, that was the first one and it sold really well. And um, I did this creepy little, you know, the, the outbreak story is what I got to draw. And um, that was really cool. And then the second one came at, well, the second one at the time um, was like the highest, I, I don't know. I, we got some crazy numbers on Kickstarter and um and then it ended up getting um, New York Times bestseller and IGN People's Choice Award. And oh, wow. I, I was stoked. I, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of, that was, I think it's like 10 years ago or 12 years ago now, but I still tell everybody because uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. that's my claim to fame. Uh, I need to win something else or do something notable sooner. You know, it's going to really seem pathetic. You could ride that for a while. <laughs> more pathetic than it is now, but um and then, um, you know, I did did some other FUBAR titles. That that was uh, Pacific Theater of the Damned. And then I did um, By the Sword. And I did the backup story in Mother Russia, which did really well. Um, and then um, the last one that came out, the last FUBAR title was uh, FUBAR All-Star. And in that one, I drew, I wrote and drew my own story. And... Um, 
that was really cool. That was like one of the first things that I had written that um, got printed. So I was kind of stoked about that. And um, most recently, I don't know, I've done some other stuff between then and now, um, like Fractured Scary Tales. I got to um, go back and do some like horror, you know, humor, horror stuff. And then um, most recently, uh, I drew uh, the cover and um, two of the stories in um, uh, David Walker's Imposter Syndrome. And um, I got to do everything. I did the pencils, the the inks, the color. The only thing I didn't get to do was the letter or the lettering. And um, that's been really cool. I, um, I was just at... Uh, Rose City Comic Con last weekend and um, camped out behind Dave's table and people were just buying them right and left. So, <laughs> yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've done something that people seem to like. Um, so, and it's pretty cool. I mean, Dave, Dave's a, a three-time Eisner winner and he let me on one of the stories, it's called um, Crash Landing. He let me tell the whole story with no, no words. So he I gave me that. the story um just kind of a breakdown this is what i want to see on this page this is what happens on this page i want you to really punch this up here and then he just let me go to town with the rest of it and i think it's probably it's my favorite thing that i've done so far cool what was the title of that one again um david walker's imposter syndrome imposter syndrome yeah yeah but well uh, now i there's talk that I may be doing a cover for a silver line something. Oh, okay. Uh, um, but you, can you, you, you do you know any is coming, coming yeah, soon? Or I don't what, know can if you, I can say. Okay. I, well, I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to <laughs> say something and have somebody go, you said what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing my time. <laughs> we didn't sign anything, pal. <laughs> uh, calculus says hi, ho, everybody. That was uh, mentioned a few uh, minutes oh. ago. Hello, Calculus. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, for all of our viewers out there, please um, ask your questions of Steve. He's got a, a yeah. pretty cool resume. Um, Steve, how do people find you online if they're listening along right now? Or, um, where would I they find most you? Most of my time on Facebook. Okay. Um, and you can just, you know, Google my name or uh, search my name. But um, on Instagram, I'm under I hate Steve. And it's uh, S E E E V E E V. So, okay. So if you E V E, you'll get somebody else. <laughs> but I think um, there's another another Steve that hates himself more than me and got it first. <laughs> did um isn't is there? I think when I searched you as well, um you did not create the GIF and you did not <laughs> pass away a few years ago. Correct. That's no. another Steve. Okay. No. no matter what my kids tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's my dad yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um so so in your art style um mm -hmm. how would you describe your style and i mean your preferred first <clears throat> style i'm sure you can deviate this way and that way to match the the story or what whatever but how would you describe your style um it's evolved a lot um Back in the day, it was very, very cartoony, um, you know, silly. Uh, back in the 90s, it was, um, there was a lot of, um, of Tex Avery was really big and things like that. And the mm -hmm. mask and, you know, people were doing big takes and stuff like that. So I kind of picked up on that. And then after that, I thought, you know, I'm going to, try to draw gritty stuff and back in the foobar stuff. And, and, um, I did a book or a story in a book called, uh, Jesus hates zombies. And, um, <laughs> and it was kind of a more, it was cartoony, but gritty at the same time. Like, do you remember the book Roach Mill? I don't know. I've seen that one. No, um, I'm aging myself, <laughs> but, um, it, it was this gritty cartoony book back in the nineties. Um, and, um, that's what I went for, for a few, quite a few years actually. And now I'm kind of reinvented myself when I got, uh, when I switched to digital, because now I can, now that I have the world at my fingers and I can do anything I want. And, um, and, and, you know, 
make mistakes and you know isn't it great yeah it's wonderful i spent i spent 30 years where i would only uh work on ir original art mm -hmm. and when i when i hit 60 i, I noticed i had just the, the barest hint of a tremor in my hand <laughs> and i got an ipad and started di digital inking where you can turn off the smoothing control yeah I've probably extended my career for another 15 years or more. I sympathize I can... because that's why I draw um, that's digitals help me out because I do have a really shaky hand. And um, when I do draw, um, I, I've kind of sort of adopted that sort of fake Mobius look with the short lines and the, you know, nothing mm -hmm. long, nothing straight, nothing like that because I can't hold those lines anymore. And so digital has made it wonderful because like oh, you said, you can crank up the smoothing part of it and ooh, I can make a line all the way across this page. And, and, the, and the old eyes, you know, you just. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I catch myself. I'm drawing things at like 350 times as big as it is. <laughs> and I'm thinking nobody is going to see <laughs> this. And I'm over there like erasing off little tails that are sticking out slightly. Who cares? You know, so. Yeah, it's it's Barb, you're it's only 30. Really you shouldn't cool, have these problems. <laughs> What's that? It's a Barb, you're only 30. You shouldn't have all these problems. <laughs> yes, yes, this is true. My daughter just turned 40. That means I had her before I was born. Well, that, it's, it's an <laughs> incredible feat, Barb. But <laughs> 10, 10th anniversary of your 30th. <laughs> um, so Steve, what sort of uh, what sort of stories do you like? Do you have a genre that um, I, I'm noticing there's a good amount of uh grittiness to you got some a lot of the, the zombies and the scary um yeah. but also some of the the cartoony um what what do you prefer um right now i can tell you what i'm drawing right now because i i think i've i've um teased a lot of it online um so i you know why not tell but it's um i'm doing a book about um just these like aliens that crash land on a planet and um they're harassed by the the local whatevers and um so it's kind of it's set in a jungle for the better part of the whole book which is stuff i love to draw i love to draw you know it's all the textures and things and you can just go wild and um Plus, there's no perspective. <laughs> 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 Yay! Yay! And um, so, you know, there's there's a method behind, my, or yeah, a method to my madness. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it's it's a lot of monsters. It's a lot of different characters. Um, it's going to be bloody, very, very, very bloody, um, right from the beginning. I had originally wrote it as a, a 24, just a single issue, a 24 page book, and I thought, you know, if nobody picks this up. I'll just publish it myself. And um, so I, I, I had it this way. And then um, I thought, well, I'll, I, I broke it up into three pieces, three eight page pieces so that I could maybe sell it to an anthology. And I had hoped maybe heavy metal might pick it up because that's like a dream. Um, but I started showing my friends and I ran it by um, Dave Walker again. And he said, why don't we make this into a graphic novel and you know from there we're off we go um i'm probably about 20 percent through the book so hopefully maybe next year that sounds I'm, fantastic. Doing, I'm doing the whole thing i'm doing um the all of the pencils inks colors everything but the letters um so so I, I take it the city, cityscapes and their their lines and, and perspectives are not your uh, ideal. I, I've, no, I, I've, I I'm cheat not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's always a reluctance, um, or you find you find the one artist who loves that. That's his, mm. his oh, yeah. thing to draw those, and you can you can you can tell that backgrounds. Um, mm -hmm. One of my one of my art buddies always like backgrounds. He, he always checks and complains or loves them. You know, check out his oh, backgrounds, 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 mm -hmm. because I think sometimes people just want to skip them. Um, and sometimes that's fine. Uh, you can have a mix of backgrounds or, or, or none. Um, but uh, not being an artist, I can, I'm, I'm always amazed by, right. uh, 
by detail or how a uh, scene can be either super detailed or there can be just the impression of what's happening. And um, I'm, I'm frequently amazed by, by you guys, how you are able to give an energy or movement or, or a mood uh, in a, in a scene like that. So that that's, that's really cool. Do you have a, you have a title for that upcoming story? Did you say that? And I missed it. Yeah. Or, oh no, it's, um, it's going to be called beasts. Beasts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. And you know, it, the movie had to come out. Beast just had to come out oh, right yeah. now. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, we, we haven't talked about changing the title yet. So hopefully it'll still stay that way. It's plural. We've got more than one beast. So <laughs> Multiple we're, we're beasts. Better. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I, I've been talking the whole time. I don't want to talk over Rory or Barb, um, but I also don't want to put them on the spot. Barb, um, you're working on uh, Divinity number three presently that right now. And also and Sirens number three. Sirens number three. Okay. Um, people can get, if, they, they, if they're just joining us, uh, Sirens 1 and 2 on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are talking with Steve Wilhite, who uh, did the, the scary book uh, back in the 90s. And um, it has been revived for our horror extravaganza. Um, and as a reminder to everybody, all of our Kickstarter campaigns have been been successful and fulfilled uh and we have i'm clicking back and forth here we have four days to go it has been funded so everybody who is out there we would encourage you to keep telling your friends because if you've backed it already you want more people to back it because we're going to unlock more stretch goals and that means more goodies for everybody is there, and is there already a stretch goal now well there, uh let's see yes there's a stretch goal Yes, go on the yep. um, update page. This is Thank our twentieth kick successful mm -hmm. Kickstarter, by the way. Okay, uh, let's see. Bookmarks for everybody at the twenty five hundred dollar mark. Every physical tier backer, and then and then there's going to be some digital stories coming out after that. So I would really. Uh, recommend everybody goes and checks that. And I know Steve would be very happy with that. Steve, um, as a writer, I always like to ask what um, artists love to get from writers and what they absolutely hate to get from writers so <laughs> that I can improve and not make artists angry at me. Um, <laughs> Barb, you're angry at me every, all the time, just constantly. I'm sorry, Barb. I, I start with my conversations by apologizing to Barb because I've done, I know I've done something. Um, Steve, so what do you, uh, what do you love to get from, from artists? And then what, do, what drives you up the wall? From artists or writers? Oh, I'm sorry. From writers, from writers. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, what, uh, what I like to get, um, I I like it when they trust me to kind of go with it, you know, um, kind of like less is more. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like that a lot. Uh, other than that, I like moody scenes. I know that mm -hmm. sounds weird, mm -hmm. but I don't like drawing fight scenes. Um, I can and I do and I have to, but my mm -hmm. my favorite parts are just, you know, uh, like in like in crash landing um you know this guy has to after after the the crash he he buries his brothers and um after he's done he just walks back to what's left of his ship and he just picks up a cup of coffee and looks at a picture of his brothers and then basically cries himself to sleep that's the kind of stuff i like to draw mm. you know it's very moody it's very i get to i get to really let the characters act and I got I got one for you. Laboratories. <laughs> laboratories. <laughs> laboratories. I <hate> laboratories. <laughs> the thousands of beakers and bottles. Come on, that's yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> They're all reflective. And the color, you know, you got all those reflections and yeah. <laughs> the ink so they're, they're so much to work with, so much opportunity. They're a pain in the ass to ink. Yeah. So when you're preparing I, for a horror story, do you have uh, an, an equation that you follow to make it scary, to make it effective? Or do you just go with the flow and it's like, oh yeah, this would be good next? It depends. Um, I, I like to, I like to do, you know, a big reveal. And mm -hmm. um, luckily with all the FUBAR stuff, I've been able to, to ask, you know, there, there were a couple times that, you know, it worked out. But 
I, I asked on one of them, can I draw an extra page? Um, because I, and, and I wanted it to, the way the book was set up, I knew that you wouldn't see the reveal until you flip the page. Right. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that surprise. And um, it turned out pretty good. That was in the, um, that was in the, the second FUBAR. And then um, after that, it just, I got to do some really crazy stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of face ripping and neck biting. And <laughs> I, I got to draw this uh, a, a guy uh, hit another. Well, he was this enormous knight or, you know, medieval guy, whatever. But he has this enormous mace. And he just brings it down on top of this other guy's head. So I got to draw all these eyeballs oh, coming so out, and yeah. jaw bones <laughs> broken, and teeth everywhere, and blood all over. God, that's the stuff I like. <laughs> I, I bet you aced your A and P class. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. That's fantastic. So, um, I, I you don't want a full script, I gather. You don't like that. You said you sound like you like that leeway. Well. That only works though if it's if it's humor, you got to have a full script. Sure. Oh, sure. Because you because you can't you know you can't have the characters just looking like they're talking and right. then fit a joke in there. Um, <laughs> Throwing in the occasional spit take and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got to have a full script for for humor. You know, um, but uh, for that stuff, but if it's if it's like science fiction or or you know straight up horror. For me, you know, just tell me what you want to see on the page and and let me figure it out from there. Um, that's so there's you got to approach each story differently, kind of. Um, it just depends on who your audience is, really, too. So ha have you been able to vet working with writers and so forth? Have you been able to have that luxury to turn some folks down and, and work with people you know? Or have you run into... Have you run into trouble with, with your style versus their style? Yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah, I've been asked to, to work for, for on stuff and I just, it, it didn't, I knew I couldn't do a good job. Um, and then um, the personal things, I, I lost some jobs. Um, it was bad for a while, but I, I made a comeback. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's that, but, um, yeah, it's, I've had to turn down stuff I really want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's like, oh gosh, this would be so fun, yeah. but I've already <laughs> got, you know, 80 more pages to draw of something else and that's going to take a while. <laughs> right, right, right. That's always, that's tough. Um, not like I speak from experience that I'm inundated with work, but the, uh, the freelance life a lot of times is feast or famine and you, it seems like all the, all the work comes at once and you can only do so many jobs at one time and then, uh, pass that along. Um, you can uh, half ass a bunch of things or whole ass. Yeah. One thing. <laughs> you do. And you do want to whole ass that one job because, uh, yeah, yeah I, trying to do multiples and that's that's tough um well, what, I work what does job like, too yeah i was gonna ask that you, yeah i've been there 20 years um i'm the food safety manager so oh okay uh <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's what i do that's where the money comes you, from yeah it's yeah not from comics <laughs> 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 that, that, that is that is advice to uh, to give to to aspiring people don't don't quit your day job as much right. as you yeah. as much as you want to run off <clears throat> and chase that dream uh the day job but, really might, yeah but might be, it don't might get be yourself the, stuck right either yeah because right. like right now i can't afford to to you know go full-time in art because yeah you know for one thing i'm i'm terrible at self-promotion and you've got to hustle 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 yeah. that yep. awesome. that's yes. not me I, to be honest a lot of this stuff that i do just sort of falls in my lap and i'm like okay i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> so i haven't had to hustle in a long yeah. time and um i don't know if i could do it i tried fine art for like the last i don't know what eight years maybe and um talking to my wife over there yeah. <laughs> and um, that's helpful. and uh, she says hi um <laughs> but we i tried fine art for a while and oh my gosh i don't know how those people eat you know how <laughs> where do they get their money because you know a 200 hundred dollar painting 
only goes so far, yep. you know, and yep. have you tried counterfeiting? <laughs> counterfeiting. Yeah. That's where the money is. Uh, there's a documentary this, on a guy. This Rembrandt so. is, uh... <laughs> but that yeah. it, it's tough. And if, if you can, if you can have a job <laughs> that will allow you to not fret about that next, you know, that next no. uh, electricity bill or what's going to put yeah. food on the table, it will allow you to, to do your craft. And maybe, maybe it will, the doors will open and where you can go full time and sometimes not. And uh, I'm not there yet. Um, Barb, Barb's retired and she's, she did a mix of both. And, and now mm -hmm. she's, She's well, I did it full time. Life. Yeah, I, I did it full time for twelve years mm -hmm. back in the nineties, and then I I did it, you know, a mix, and now I'm retired and I'm just doing this because I love it. So I do it full time <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, I'm semi retired. <laughs> yeah. And Rory, Rory's working. there, <laughs> semi retired. Yeah, yeah. The the so the the business, uh, Steve, the business mm -hmm. of it. You you touched on that. Um, what what does it take? Uh, We've we've talked about this. Some of our shows, um, our Wednesday shows and so forth. We've talked about the business of it. Um, what 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 have you? What do you like to do? Do you, and do you hate it all? <laughs> the business <laughs> side of it. Um, what what's worked for you? Um, as far as what doesn't work? As far as promoting yourself, conventions, oh. uh, online, a blog, a website, all the stuff that mm -hmm. you know, that you have to treat it as a business. Which yeah. really takes up your entire life. It's very difficult. But but what has worked for you? Um, I I haven't. This was the the first. This last weekend was the first convention I've been to, and well, since the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I just had been doing some of the local shows. Um, Boise Comic Art Festival is really nice. Um, and then um, there's one here in Ontario called the Border Town um, Comic Con. Um, they're smaller, but uh, you get to interact with a lot of people yeah. and, and things like that. So they're fun. But as far as cons, they don't, I, I don't, I haven't done enough. Um, this time it was really cool. I got to meet some neat people. Um, but uh, Instagram, it's hit or miss. <laughs> I don't know. I think every now and then, um, I would put the right hashtag or something yeah. <laughs> and I would get like, you know, a bunch of likes or whatever, you know, and most of the time I don't get crap. Right. So I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, so most everything I do is just through Facebook. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, I get like 80% of my work through Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, um, I also, once a year, I do a charity thing for Inktober and, you know, I do the whole, you know, a drawing a day for the, the month of October and I do these, you know, full, well here, I don't know if you can see it, but I do these, mm -hmm. these full blown. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. I, I, and then I'll, then I'll color that. And um, I, I do it the whole nine yards. And then I just sell them on Facebook, first come, first serve. And then I take all the money, all of it, mm -hmm. and I give it to make a wish. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, the first year, yeah. it was the beginning of the pandemic. And the first year that I did it, I raised $800. And then cool. last year, I just wasn't hit. And I only made 750 This year, I'm going for 1000 So I'm really kind of... I started way early. Um, I'm yeah. not following the prompts. I'm only drawing what I want to draw. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm hoping that, you know, because um, I, I was really trying to um, be clever with the Inktober prompts and it took too long. And it was yeah. just, it was funny to me, but, you know, everybody else is like, well, this is stupid. <laughs> you know, why would I buy that? So hopefully I did all pop culture stuff this year. So, you know, okay. I'm working on a, a Godzilla drawing right oh, now, cool. or I was oh. while I was waiting. So, well, know. I'll say, um, be sure to share those with mm. us, the Silverline um, oh, yeah. uh, folks, um, Roland and so forth. Cause we can, we can share that. Um, yeah. It, the, the social media thing, um, it, it's infuriating. Sometimes you said you, sometimes you, you get that hashtag, and if, if you scroll down and look at insights and look at what people they can't, you know, people that follow and non follow, and you, you say, Oh, I got a, some action on that. But yeah, a lot of times, uh, I mean, unless you're, um, 
and I'm not saying you're not, Steve, but if you're not, unless you're a hot guy or a, or a sexy lady, a lot of times it's just like, you know, you make all this content. Um, but I have found if you're, if you're out there every so often, you, and you said you get your work on Facebook, um, I got, I got a connection on LinkedIn that just turned into huh. something. So you, you never know. Um, Somebody so else is just telling like- me how great LinkedIn worked for him, and I'm like, I can't figure that I, thing I out. Even, I don't even know how it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I was uh, lucky enough to proofread LinkedIn for Dummies uh, like a decade ago, um, and while I proofread it, I followed the step. I actually did what it said, <laughs> and uh, and so I've been able to tr- maintain. There's, it's not like it's not like there's a lot that comes from it, but I can say that one connection has panned out to something. So that's that's good. That's, you know, that's in a, de- yeah. a decade of being <laughs> online, uh, but. Um, yeah, usually you feel like you're shouting into the void. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but and then you look at other people's posts and you see that they've got like three thousand responses. How? How? How, <laughs> how are they doing me. that? I don't know. It's tough. It is tough to 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 act like a business, um, act and and be constantly promoting. Um, I don't know but, if I can do it. No, but I don't think I don't think I can either. It it's it, just coming up with content too, just to have a. Have something new and clever every single day to put on Facebook, um, and or uh, you try to share. I try to share little snippets of the comic or something like mm-hmm. that. Sooner or later, you shared the whole comic. You, you're making <laughs> yeah. slices, and after a while, yeah. Okay, well, if you want my comic, it's there on Facebook. You can read the whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Have you done this thing where where you're really you're really proud of something that you've just done, and you're like, oh, I can't wait to share this yeah. on Facebook, and then you're like. You can't because that's that gives the whole that story. That gives. Away. Yep. I want, yeah, I want everyone to see this thing. <laughs> yep. Yep. Can't do it. That can't so share cool. it. <laughs> um. Well, I, we're we're coming up to the end of our first hour here. Where's my clock here? My cut. Oh, over there. Okay. Oh, it's right up on my screen. Um, and uh, I want to remind folks we are talking to Steve Wilhite, who uh did the art for uh the scary, scary book. Uh, a few moons ago, he did this, and it has been revived to be part of Silverline's horror extravaganza presently on Kickstarter. If you don't know how to find it, go to Kickstarter. You can search Silverline. You can search Roland Man. You can search. I don't know if you can search horror extravaganza. That might get you there. But our links are everywhere. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We are on LinkedIn and SilverlineComics.com. And if you haven't gone there, folks, and signed up for our newsletter, do that because our great Tim TK mm-hmm. uh, manages that and gets folks to uh, the interviews and he gets craft stories and so forth. Craft like yeah, basket good. making and craft uh, quilting and knitting, those sorts of crafts. And uh, he uh, sends out that newsletter plus Back all your me. updates. It, mm-hmm. Thank you. Perfect. One of those uh, little simple <laughs> things that like you, you put on a thing and you melt them all together. <laughs> The uh the beads the the other yeah. beads but yeah yeah, yeah it's, but maybe Rory talk to Tim you can do a, an article <laughs> on making the, the, the window things yeah. oh goodness it's, and uh, I'm right I'm it, Adam Wee <laughs> I don't even know what you're saying if you get uh, get that on the newsletter people out there uh, you'll be updated on everything Silverline and it's really cool to see all the Silverline growth and I love that Steve is here it's just, just uh, another great artist whose name is, is part of Silverline. And when I think of being part of Silverline, uh, I'm honored to have I used to, to share a screen with guys like Steve who have done really cool work. It's, you it's, it's really, I'm, you'll come to I am, I'm, I'm, hum, I'm humbled. It's, and uh, <laughs> if you go back through all of our, our live streams, um, we've had some great guests and we have a lot of cool people doing work. Uh, for Silverline, and not just making the stories, but like Steve said, he's going to be doing a cover, um, and that's just that's really neat. Because uh, right. if you come to maybe, what's that? Maybe. I say oh, could well, maybe may, maybe maybe not. I, I don't want to commit him to anything. I'm that's, pretty. I'm ninety nine percent sure. Unless you were contractually <laughs> obligated, he might be doing a cover. Um, Court order. At, at the convention, <laughs> yeah, forced to do it as part of it. <laughs> That's yeah. how he's getting paid. Roland lets him do, it, do another cover. Uh, it was at either the that or of trash on the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> That's him. That's the one. The conventions, uh, if, if folks, if you're able to come to a convention where Silverline is, it's really neat to see because 
you get to see a lot of our variant covers and you get to see mm-hmm. um, we do a mix up. We'll do old school style with black and white uh, interiors. And um, for Daytona Beach, we did I say, say we like it was my idea. Uh, Roland and uh, Kablam um, did um, variant covers just special for the convention. And um, that's what's really cool about about Silverline, especially I feel like we've got a we've got a good handle on bringing in the artists and, and collaborating and making really great stories um and i know barb is part of barb helps wrangle all the all the cats for a lot of stories like, yeah. i was just gonna say it's like hurting cats. yes yes and getting everybody on the same page um uh, so steve uh any any dream stories that you would like to work on uh, any any dream projects or characters that you'd like to draw you mean like like the big two? Or? Well, if if the big two or um or any story like if you had a if you had a unlimited budget, oh, um, if you have a, a story you created yourself that uh, and make, are you, are you going to steal millions. his idea? <laughs> <laughs> What's your million dollar idea? Let us know. I have this, <laughs> I've always had this giant sweeping epic sword and sorcery story I wanted to tell, but it's like that's way too many pages. <laughs> I linked it. What's that? Bar- I've Bar- always wanted to do a sword and sorcery. You've got an anchor yeah. already lined up. I and it's it's just that's that's like the dream job, you know. If I won the lottery, I'd probably draw it. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, in the meantime, you know, I I would love if I were to work for the big two. Nothing for Marvel. I I can't think of anything for Marvel I'd like to draw. I spent but, 10 years with Marvel and DC. I, I'm I'm pretty happy where I'm at now. I want to draw Commandy though. I mean Oh command oh yeah. Well, okay, I'm yeah. gonna come back to that. <laughs> yeah. Command like jungle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jungle and ruins. No, Too no straight lines in the world. Yeah, no straight yeah. lines. Yeah. <laughs> uh you figured me out. <laughs> yep. I'm so, I'm all over that. I'd love that. Do do you like do you like the writing process? Because you've um, so this this epic story you have in mind. Would you write that? Yeah. Okay. I, I've written a few things. I there's a, a book called um, Once Upon a Frying Pan, which there's also a Kickstarter out. I think for the the second issue, or yeah, second issue. Um, but um, I was brought in. There were three individual comics. You know, three three you know twenty four page books. Um, two of them had been written and then I had to write the last one, which was, it's an insane, insane story about a guy with a bag over his head and a <laughs> magical, you know. And, you know, it's like, here, Steve, you know, finish this. So I brought in just all kinds of crazy things and, you know, it ended up, um, there's a parody of the watcher um gordon ramsay's in it um, <laughs> you know there these other celebrities because you know, what are they going to do sue us and um <laughs> so the, the writing process for that was just insane um for what i did with beast was i knew the story that i wanted to tell and i knew how it started and how it ended so those two parts were easy it was filling in everything else so I just took the the major beats of the story, the things I wanted to make sure that the the reader saw, and then I kind of sort of move it back and forth like it's on a slider. You know, you might slide that scene over a couple pages mm-hmm. just so that you can you know build up to it and things like that. So it's very fluid. And then even when I get to the um, to the actual drawing of it. Um, it it doesn't end up the same way I, I had imagined it. So <laughs> yeah, and the, I, the, I, I love for myself. I give myself a full script. It's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. No, that's great. Cause well, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a mix with, um, with outlines. I, I know some people feel, Oh, it's, I'm constrained by that outline and it doesn't allow my artistic <laughs> freedom um, but what I think oh. the outline does is it gets so much out of your brain that allows for mm-hmm. then because you can then really polish uh, what is kind of a uh, not so great, usually uh, beginning of a story. And so your full scripting for yourself is, is awesome. So it's a, kind of the, I would think similar is similar to 
creating that outline and then really working within it. Um, and it's funny you said that about creating a beginning and an end. Um, over the weekend, we had a, a panel at Daytona um, uh, with uh, Martin Piero of Cosmic Times and Richard Rivera of Scout. Um, and our own Tim TK was there and they all talked about the writing process and really kind of hitting on the same notion. Get the beginning. Mm -hmm. Get the end. The end may change when you get back mm -hmm. to the end, but have an end in mind and then work the big beats out in the middle, uh, which is what I like to do. I get the big mm -hmm. and and depending on how long if it's 22 pages, you got you still have this, the, the spots. If it's if it's an epic, if it's a whatever, um, get that end in mind. Um, and then work toward it. My advice that I always give to people, and um, forgive me, Barb and Roy, I've heard this a thousand times, is get the thing done, the story <laughs> done, get the beginning right. and, and all the middle parts, and then you can go back because otherwise you're going to edit to death and you'll never have mm -hmm. anything. You'll, and you'll get sick of it. You'll get so sick of it, you don't want to work on it. Um, yeah, so, at some uh, point, I, I have to say this is enough. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, I have a simple three step process step one bourbon yes step two <laughs> make it big okay step three wishful thinking well that's good that's good Rory. that's good uh that's, that's why i like working with ra because i mean for once for one thing he's very experienced bourbon. writer so i'll do that i'll do the outline the plot the story um and i'll, I'll kind of i'll kind of jot down a rough outline and then i send it to him and then he tears it apart yeah and he sends it back to me so okay With love. Really, wrong, yeah. wrong 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. what we should really flip this here and put this mm -hmm. here and and um what why is she they doing this here because i'm 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 a newbie you know i mean even though the story is mine and the cra the, the characters are mine the plot's mine and i i can write a pretty good literary story I am not a scripter, mm -hmm. you know, so I need help. So amazing. we make a pretty good team because we we're on the same page on a lot of things. And the funny thing is, is that there are places in divinity where I have more experience than RA. For one thing, he's never had kids and our, <laughs> and this is about an 11 year old girl. And um, I was raised around firearms. So I, I, I have more experience i guess with those because i'm, I'm always saying well no this you can't use an uzi uh, uh, as a long distance weapon <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, pray and pray. come on yeah I, I, was, yeah I was just reading one and uh the, it was a like a freeze frame of bullets going through the air but they all still had their casings on i hate that I went, <laughs> it was yeah, really good art so i was surprised yeah mm -hmm. but with the i love it with the nitpickers we and that's another topic we talk about all the time so rory and i have a revolutionary war story uh this side here uh I, and um we want to stay true to form yes. as best we can yes but we know we're taking huge liberties too but we don't want to give people the opportunity the, the uh, mm, actually people <laughs> those opportunities <laughs> Uh, so those muskets weren't introduced until 1880. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, so your your unlimited budget uh, would be a, a soaring fantasy epic. Um, yeah, fantasy was, stuff is fun. I, I love to draw fantasy stuff. Um, Lord of the Rings fan, yes. Um, the Book, movies, movie, yes. Movie. Um, absolutely hated The Hobbit. Um, all three of them yeah, were yeah. just <laughs> horrible, in my opinion. Um, but uh, the new the new series, I've watched. I watched the first episode. It was pretty mm -hmm. to look at. Uh, right. Really didn't yeah. grab me yet. I was so, going to say I was kind of I, bored. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. I I've don't heard. think I can get into the one on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I I, the, I I just don't think I can do that. I'm I'm a huge Lord of the Rings series. Again, like you, I wasn't really all that taken by the hobbit but lord of the rings anything of the rings. fantasy yeah yeah, yeah. No, the i, I listen i listen to fantasy audiobooks all day long when i'm doing my wheel of time yeah. um hasn't grabbed me i and i never read the no, books which, either so i <laughs> i i can enjoy the show without being I started them and then it, and it was like it just it, it, it drags <laughs> and i want to love it because it's it's not a bad story but it's just it 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 drags well the bad uh, thing about it is that it, they came out so slowly that by the it, time they got to book five i had to go back oh, to book one oh, yeah, the, the, the books, going on. yeah well didn't and didn't robert <laughs> jordan die before the end didn't he have to have somebody yeah, yeah somebody else finished the the series yeah yeah the hobbit i could not do 
I, the first one I, I enjoyed for the most part, but then it was just a sharp, yeah. rapid decline. Well, they took such a short book and stretched it out. Oh, three movies, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a short story that they uh, and, made way and too long. Nothing beats the Rankin Bass Hobbit. So that that's <laughs> I, that's, I, I have that one, Hobbit and I sent the other three to the thrift store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it really did. It's all, that's God's honest. But truth. do you do you have the uh, do you have the audio? Uh, LP of The Hobbit with the book. Mm. I have the book. I, yeah. It was just here. I, yeah. oh, I think it's upstairs. <laughs> but I was just showing my daughter about it. I was like, oh, it doesn't it doesn't have any pictures of the elves, which is what I had dug it out for. Mm. Oh, yeah. In the, the weird audio book. The weird green appear. elves with the weird feet and the... Yeah, they had all had Schwarzenegger accents. And... Yeah, the weird strange. <laughs> Are you in my forest? I don't know. How... It's so right, strange. Yeah, so weird. You must yeah. get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Come with me I, if you want to live. That's that's my go to. <laughs> that's my go to when the kids are saying, "What are we gonna watch?" Uh, Animated Hobbit. They, oh. Yes, yes. yes. Ah, what? It's a musical. <laughs> yeah. the, the, now the animated Lord of the Rings has has some really good stuff in it yeah. that I wish they would have done the same in the live action. I think yeah. it's better in some parts in the in the animated version, but there's also some really so bad strange. stuff in it. We, we've had a whole the episode. The rotoscoping. We had a yeah. whole episode on animated Lord of the Rings. Uh, yes. Oh, maybe no, it was, was our, our pop and culture I segment. And I stop about the rotoscoping. And... Uh-oh. Yes. Did I and, just uh, go yeah. down a rabbit hole? Oh, well, you could. Oh, we could. You so, uh, we, we have um, common themes on the Wednesday show. Uh, Star Trek and Star Wars. Uh, Lord of the Rings. And a little bit of James Bond. James Bond. Sprinkled in. Uh, Dean and I try to make our James Bond references. Uh, when we can, um, well, I usually try to get in a uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nick. Yeah, has uh, been coming up lately because John Medic is John, our 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 John Medic uh, <laughs> sniper and rook author uh, does not like Nicholas Cage, so we try to bring him up as uh, often as we can. <laughs> we just watched his newest movie the other day. It was pretty good. It, is it good? The with, the with one Pedro that... Pascal. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> okay. It was really fun. Speaking uh, of Pedro Pascal. There's going to be a Mandalorian 3, and I've already seen the spoilers for it. <laughs> Yay! Um, so other than uh, Lord of the Rings, Steve, um, what, other, what other genres tickle you? Um, you know, um, we were talking about books for a second, mm -hmm. and fantasy books in, in particular. Um, I was never, I, I never liked, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it, high fantasy or, mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, yeah. the stuff I liked was like the, the you know, sword and sorcery, Conan, um, Carl Wagner's Kane. I mean, Kane, I love Kane. Mm -hmm. um, so good. Um, Glenn Cook's The Black Company. Uh, yes, that whole series that good. was so good. I have good. that on audiobook. Yeah. yeah. I and, do like I do like the high, high fantasy, though, when they're going on a fun quest. Yeah, but I, I like a, I like sword and sorcery, and I like high fantasy. But I'm not <laughs> particularly keen on real techie sci-fi. Mm. Yeah, I don't read sci-fi. If um, you can, if you can uh, palette across a genre story, Forgotten Ruin is one of like two or three books where like special forces go through these portals and end up oh, in like orc infested yeah. fantasy land. So oh, you okay. have these guys like, like cover and fire with two forties with against orcs and giants. And... <laughs> are you, I, I really honestly, are you any I never read a fantasy novel. Ruben. Ruben. Oops. Ruin. Ruin. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk okay. over you. Um I, oh, to good. be honest, I haven't read a fantasy novel for years. Um right now I'm on this when I do read well, right now I'm reading a, a, a Skinwalker Ranch book, but oh yeah, um, <laughs> that's good but stuff. when I do read, I, I read these goofy. Um, they're like Florida detective novels, like Carl Hyacin and Tim Dorsey and stuff like that. And it's just these insane things that happen in Florida, and you know that's that's kind of what I <laughs> all of what I true. enjoy. It. All of completely yeah, escapist. Yeah. 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 Um, but we, but very fun. I don't read a whole lot anymore though. It's it's if you really if sad. you want to get something really fun um and fantasy, go for the uh the Riera books by Michael J. Sullivan. Those are a lot of fun. Of course, and anything okay. from David Eddings. I love David Eddings. I used to read mm -hmm. that. Um 
I, I think the first three books he had, isn't that the one with the Belgarian? big giant thing? Oh, I no, I don't know about that. I, did you read the Belgarian? No. Ah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> we listened to, uh, on a way to, to, uh, uh, to and from Florida, hither and thither, uh, the started listening to the Red Wall uh, mm. books because we my daughter's 10 um, had to keep it a little yeah. age appropriate um, <gasps> and Potter. I those well Harry Potter would be good she's we've watched those she's my my wife has read them to to them to the kids and um, yeah, the book and I think is great I think the, the audio books of Redwall yeah. are fantastic yeah. uh, they hey. are read by a cast of characters hello Roland man Roland yeah. Yeah. talking about hey, Roland. Roland. Roland we have uh, we've gotten Steve's life story we have Excellent. His, his his body of work and uh we're, we're awesome. shooting the breeze now about pop culture and stories we love um so roland speaking of unlimited budgets uh steve would love you to fund uh with your uh large coffers um his epic fantasy world uh, that he would like to create okay so um, we fully support it. And i said I, I said i would ink it we've already got an anchor i know you like <laughs> oh, a team cool. you like a team oh, ready to go my okay? oh, so Roland, I feel like this is right up your alley to, to just uh, give it the green light. Uh, yeah, Roland, just <laughs> dig, out that, dig out that wallet, Roland. Oh, look, I, I, I've got it in my pocket right he here. Just <laughs> the the the, what's the, the, Sim, the, the Simpsons when uh, when Bart asks, what does he need Homer? Dad, can I borrow $50,000? Sure. Wait, what for? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this. And hey, Rob, hey, Rob. It's quite like a, uh, we got um, we got a just great came team. in from Critical Blast. Oh my All goodness! Right. Just, spent a, just spent an hour with uh, with the guy over Critical Blast talking about uh, the Kickstarter and a little bit nice. about my career and all that stuff. Oh, what have you guys been up they, to? They weren't too critical, were they, Rob? Roasting Steve. I'll give you this. It was a it was a blast. Blast. Okay, good, good. Yeah, Rob, we um, we we are in our last uh, the last few minutes of our show. We've got a counting down. Mm -hmm. Uh, Steve um, Will Heights joined us, and for all of our viewers out there, uh, he is the artist for. uh, I'm going to (laughs) scroll up so I don't miss anything. He's got the scary book, which is presently part of Silverline's horror. That is a word that you have to enunciate mm. online. Yes, yes. Horror, you know horror, 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 horror extravaganza. Horror. It, 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 horror. it just <laughs> brings to mind bordellos. House of horrors. <laughs> horror, yeah, horror house. That was uh, a movie, right? You're going so to the Ron gone. Bordello. <laughs> 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 and uh, he, he's got the the scary book, which uh, which which was his um, first foray into comics back in the '90s. That Roland said, "Here you go. Uh, how about draw this?" And uh, he did it, and um, it it got it got shelved after a while, but it's back. And for everybody out there, you can grab this copy. It's funded right now on Kickstarter. Sweet. We've got four mm-hmm. days to go to get more stretch goals. So yep. if you funded it, don't forget to tell everyone you know. Everyone, even people you don't like, tell them uh, to get over to Kickstarter to keep uh, supporting it so we can reach more stretch goals so we all get more goodies. But the scary book. And then now we've got the Rob Davis here uh, who Uh-oh. has uh, worked on Davis. Twilight Grimm, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, which is a great story as well. So this is very cool. Um, great combo. And Roland, who has put this all of this together, um, to make a great combination, it's it's a really cool idea, Roland. Um, was it was it your idea or or well, it is. And, uh, the truth of the matter, the idea is just that uh, we just keep making comic books. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and so and these, kind of like, and these yep. all happened to be at least there was some yep. kind of theme yep. oh, and for this, this one. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah, just, <laughs> Can you yeah. call it an anthology? Is there we, enough stories in it to be an anthology? Well, if that we would have to put them together if we didn't. No, yeah. in, oh, it's as in one. Yeah, order, yeah, yeah. And and you know we 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 played with that a little bit. Um, that didn't necessarily work out too too well. Plus, it, we'd have to get bigger books and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. So we, we also but found at Kablam when you get mm-hmm. over a certain number of pages, it yeah. gets pretty pricey. Per- yeah, yeah, but and, and yeah, because gets... you're you're looking at uh, you're looking at changing the binding, but also we found mm-hmm. that um, yep. that fans when they were backing it, they're kind of like, well, you know, it's kind of a flip book. It's kind of cool, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's like, where do you put it in your collection? Which yeah, yeah which side up? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta move it every week. <laughs> you well, know, the answer you buy two. 
you, yeah, exactly. You've got to buy yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. You've yeah. got to buy two. <laughs> so um, you have pedals that start with the same letter. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of why we we ultimately switched to doing the individual ones. So it's okay, okay, look, you can now you can bag your sirens and put it here. You can bag your scary book and put it here. You know, um, and they can still have the Kickstarter exclusives, which is kind of what we were we were pushing the covers, you know. So we can still have those, um, but it just now individual. So yeah. yeah so Roland, personally, I like that better. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it, yeah it, I, I'm I'm with the fans. I think that's yep. a better way to go. Yeah. I, I, do I too. really do. I like it better. Well, mm -hmm. and see there. So nothing but positive <laughs> yeah. since we since you, we kind you of made, made us it. all happy, Roland. Well, it, it's, you know, <laughs> the, you're, the, you're, the, there won't be coal in your stocking this Christmas. <laughs> the flip books are kind of cool. They're nostalgic and everything, but it's kind of like okay, you did it once. That's enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Besides, you know. I'm very egocentric. I like to have divinity all by itself. All by. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Not... <laughs> we were the backside of that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So Barb, we. Barb just so, ripped so hers in half. And... Barb, we need... <laughs> well, I will tell you guys. No, I like to kick start with you. Guys. Barb is not. Barb's yeah. not the only creator I have heard say that. Okay. So they're like, yeah, I want to be, I want to be oh, my, I want to be oh, me. I want to yeah, be my me, own. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to oh, share yeah. with somebody else. Roland, I wanted, wanted to ask you, not to put you on the spot, uh, mm -hmm. what was it about Steve's work that made you, uh, back many, uh, some, some moons ago, um, give him the, the uh, scary book? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, obviously, um, you know what? I, I'm trying to remember what I saw of, of Steve's initially. Um I can't even remember how. Do you remember it all, Steve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We told the story. It was, um, I think it was uh, at San Diego in like 90 or 91. I okay. had made these little giveaway books uh, that I made at Kinko's and was giving them to <laughs> every publisher I could find. And Smart man. You were the you were the one that uh, uh, yeah. okay. You're the one that you were the fish that bit. You were the fish that bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, so so there's a couple things. Obviously, you know, I love Steve's uh, storytelling, but uh, y y if you think about it in the '90s, uh, of course, I love Steve's style, and and you you can ask him if he will admit it. Occasionally, throughout the years, I have dropped him a little line and said, "Hey, man, you want to make a comic book with me?" Hey, man. And he's like, oh, I'm busy doing this or I'm busy doing that. But occasionally throughout the years, I have dropped him a line because I absolutely love <laughs> his art. I love his style. Um, and and that's really kind of what drew me to it. And then, of course, uh, the, the our, so the reason the scary book happened, though, is like, you know, Steve's style. You wouldn't think of, of Steve doing a horror book, right? I mean. Look at his style, right? So uh, I talked to to Sid, who I, I think I, I think he was doing Marauder at the time. I can't remember. And I said, "Dude, I love this guy's work. What do you think about doing a a, a, a comedy horror?" And and the funny thing, <laughs> Sid had just Sid had literally just written a, a column or a piece or opinion piece somewhere in which he said comedy and horror don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, then, and then when I asked him to do that, he was like, sure, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget that. <laughs> yeah, but there, but but the, the cool thing is there are so many little nuances in Steve's storytelling that you, you, you've you got little subtle things that you've got. Yeah, the story's there and you can follow it, but there are little subtle things. One of my favorite scenes is where there's a couple of cops, uh, security guards. <laughs> And, and and Steve tells this particular page, there's a long panel, long panel, long panel, long panel. So you get these cops and there's this closet and there's this picture frame on the wall, right? And they're having this conversation and the photo, the picture frame is reacting to what's going on. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just, it's so funny, right? Cool. And they're, I think, I think if I, if I remember correctly, you modeled them after uh, Abbott and Costello, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. um, Laurel and Hardy. Right. Laurel and Hardy. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's it. Laurel yeah. and Hardy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, so yeah, that's what uh, that's what drew me to it that's back then. What's that's good comics. <laughs> but, yeah. but he was telling us about a book he did with about a guy with a bag over his head. I thought yeah. that was hilarious. <laughs> Frying pan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Forbush Man. <laughs> yeah, kind of. 
Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, we've got a we've got a character in Airship Twenty Seven called the Bagman, <laughs> who who essentially took a a a. Uh, a bag, cut a couple of holes in it, and pulled it over his head. So, he would, <laughs> so, the, so he was a he was a a, a gangster who was uh, had decided he didn't want to be a gangster anymore. And he was going to fight against them, but he didn't want to he didn't want to get caught. So he he, he just yeah. grabbed a tote sack, cut a couple of holes in it, and put it over his head. And so they, he's, he's the bag man. Uh, so on the back of it, it probably, says. It says Joe's Feed Shop, right? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, a... <laughs> and it's it's uh, it's serious, but at the same time, it's funnier than hell. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's the same kind of thing Steve apparently does. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that... of... Yeah. Go oh. ahead. Oh, I was going to say one of the last things that I did um, was called Safe, and it was for Fubar All Star, and I got to write and draw it, <laughs> and. Um, I was listening to uh, the radio and um, there was a song, um, it's Machine Gun Blues by uh, Social Distortion. And I got the idea of, and I needed a story. I, I had asked if I could write a story for the book and they were like, sure. So it was like, then I was like, oh crap, what do I do? Now I, 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 I heard this song and I thought, oh, how, how stupid it would be to have gangsters during a zombie apocalypse rob a bank and that's what the whole story is about and um you know i play with that and there's some other stuff that happens and plays on the title and and things like that but i love that stupid humor i mean oh, yeah. Yeah. three well, stages and, type stupid yeah. Yeah. And, yeah and your art i'm sure you've been told this multiple times your art is perfectly suited for that that kind of that kind of comedy you know one of the things i i, I loved about uh when sid when sid got a, a peek at at uh, steve's art um one of the things he i think it doesn't start until the second issue though so uh but the they run into a a, a a detective and he speaks in third person in <laughs> and it is so funny right they're like we're standing right here the kid yelled at me i'm not yelling at you i don't remember the exact yeah it's it's That's really great. funny he became it's irrational that was the best thing to draw in that whole book and i just loved it because he had the trench coat and yep. the fedora always pulled down so you never saw his eyes <laughs> except for in right. one panel in all four books uh, you never saw his eyes because he was always in shadow was, <laughs> yeah i think that was the first time you saw him wasn't it or no that was that's not right it was a big pa it was a big panel of him where you saw yeah. his eyes but all the other times it was really low it's like the beetle beetle bailey like yeah, the, beetle yeah, bailey. yeah the, the dad you know. in um yeah I, I, for anyone with kids uh cloudy with a chance of meatballs his his eyebrows or he has one big unibrow <laughs> yeah. there's just one scene where he's surprised his eyes come come out for just a yeah. second uh yeah that's good community yeah uh, um the stupid humor the pete like old peter sellers stuff mm -hmm. and that's just oh, a, oh, this, it's just gold it's yeah. gold i love it um pink panther are some of my favorite oh, movies yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well yeah uh and the first pink panther is a lot different than the second one but the first one yeah it's, Shot it's in the so dark. good yeah it's so yeah. good the dark it's, is fantastic yep. yes it is um that opening my... intro scene where they're all climbing out of the windows no, and going yeah. out of the rooms and just the <laughs> music the playing in the background is just it's so funny the, it, goes, just, it just the... keeps going and going <laughs> i, oh, I the, just the... bought a dvd of or no, a blu-ray of um inspector clouseau with alan arkin Ooh. oh, oh yeah. I haven't, yeah i haven't watched it but i i'll be curious to hear that i, I haven't seen, seen that one yeah. Um, because that, yeah, it's actually, it. yeah, he... I did see the, um, the modern, uh, with Steve Martin. Oh, Steve Martin. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. Steve Martin, but yeah, there's something uh, missing. Something yeah. Missing. Yeah. yeah. Peter yeah, Sellers is missing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and to, for our, for our James <laughs> Bond, that? uh, Wednesday, uh, wham bingo, um, James Bond, uh, Casino Royale with Peter Sellers and, uh, David Niven and the whole cast of characters. That's a oh, that's yeah. a great movie. Uh, yeah. it, again, st stupid. <laughs> you, you've seen the original, uh, cas yeah, the, casino the original Casino Royale. Royale. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You've seen Although Doctor Strange not, Love, right? Yeah, it's, not, it's yeah. very very loosely based on. Oh yeah, uh, on the, book. <laughs> the Bond. Yeah. Nothing like the book, right? The, right. 
Yeah. Just the like Daniel the Daniel uh, Craig one was was pretty close. So was, I will say cool. here uh, for everybody, uh, and and Steve, I, I make my apologies to you now, uh, but I, I will say here for everyone. <laughs> Uh, just so you know, and so no one questions me. Yes, I continue to ask Steve if he would like to continue to do more work. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thus far, he's always told me, no, I got this going on. This, got so this you are going. funding his story. But, I, but I'm, not going to, I'm not going to stop. So I kind of hinted at six something. Months. <laughs> What's that? I kind of hinted yeah. at something. He, wouldn't, gotta go, he didn't bit. spill the beans rolling, I, I, well, to his I gotta credit. Go, I got to go back and listen to the first hour then. He, he, <laughs> so, he, might, so, he might could be doing something, right? Mike could. Mike been could. down in the South, hadn't yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, Hank, when we, when we stop the stream, don't go anywhere. Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to Steve. The rest yeah, of we, usually, we usually we usually visit for a little bit after. Yeah, we chat for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, Roland, I was touching on that. Uh, going at the convention, it's really cool uh, to see all of our titles, and then the mix up of the the variant covers that we've done, uh, and then the yeah. special edition covers that we've done, and then we have all of our Kickstarter exclusive content too. So I really want to tell people. It, back the kickstarter campaign yeah. because you get this the, the one one chance to get because roland is like he's like the avengers he's like captain america he gets all these people together to make something really cool and make all the extras so we have all these great names and all these great people like steve who have done a little or a lot for a project but everybody's name is on it it's so cool to see all the all the people and then the convention was really a great illustration of it. I mean, literal people, not just their work and their names on covers. It was a great crowd of people. And yeah. so uh, I, before we wrap up, because we, I don't want to forget stuff, but again, the thank you to Daytona Beach for uh, all the all the love we at Silverline got for a great, great convention. I and tried to go. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's all right. I've already talked to you about next year. It, it'll happen yeah. again. Oh, yeah. And I'm, work, I'm working on my wife. She's uh, she's clean that way, so we'll see. And it Good. will be great to add um, once this Kickstarter campaign is done. It's it's funded, so everything's going to happen. Everybody's going to get their books um, to see a mm -hmm. uh, scary book on yeah. the table there on the on the on the racks uh, in and color, in people's hands. Too, I understand. What's that? In, in color, color too. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep, it, it, it's absolutely. very exciting. Uh, it's very exciting to see. I, I kept telling people at the convention, we have a lot of titles. <laughs> Silverline has, yeah. we have over well, 30. So um, and we've had, this is our 20th campaign. So here is my little story about that. So um, I don't have it here because it's in my garage. I have a wire rack that I take with me, right? Now I've had this wire rack for probably five years now. Absolutely love it. It's great for the convention, right? Um but when I first started taking it, I had to like, you know, kind of spread some, you know, okay, here's, yeah. here's this issue and here it is again. And here it is. Again. I had to kind of spread it out and make it look like mm -hmm. I now do not have enough room to put all of our titles on it. It's really some cool. of our titles good. have to be. Put I just bought another rack other... too for my, my <laughs> yeah. comic book. Yeah. My so shows. we Those have good literally problems. run mm -hmm. out of space on the rack to put all of the books on it. Yeah. I, just I keep looking all. for a spinner rack to put on a table. And I would love. That. I can't find one. Yeah. I cannot find one. If we could, you know, you, you can get the, you can. They actually have a company that now that makes the the full size ones that stand on the floor. And they're like four hundred uh, bucks. They're like four four or five five hundred <laughs> bucks. Yeah, I, I but saw one beautiful. on. Beautiful. They're well they made. Are. But I just want one that's that I could put on the yeah. table. You know, right? That's, that's only so about half three and a half four feet tall. Yeah, yeah. About half the size. I can't find anything. Everything I find has got the wrong size uh, pockets. Yeah. It's probably They're made for cool. greeting cards or something. Huh? Greeting cards. Probably, They're yeah. Yeah. usually oh, too yeah. short. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can't put comics there, in them. There was but, a, yeah. I keep looking, big, but the, nothing's yeah, nothing's working. Big wooden rack. But for I'd free love to have on one of those on the table. Yeah. Marketplace. And um I considered going to get it. It was only like twenty five miles away, but it it was bigger than my van. It was I, I don't know what I would do with it. Like oh I thought that'd be really cool, but how do I get that to Roland? And how does Roland <laughs> take that to conventions? <laughs> I just, it's just yeah. because yeah. it was four it yeah. was four comic books. They were the narrow vertical shelves, mm -hmm. not like a bookshelf. But yeah. I'm thinking, what how in the world could yeah. I anyways that but uh, yeah. yeah, Roland, you 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 had a a handful of people. Um you're getting more and more comments about 
the, the what sort of operation are you running, Roland? Because right. it's a good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I get a lot of that, yeah. especially yeah. in the podcast I've been doing lately. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you know uh, BJ and I were talking about that just uh, just today, and uh, we were talking about the great big setup that we had, and I said, you know, if you were on the outside looking in, you would look at that and say, that's a pretty big operation there. Mm-hmm. And if you could, you know, Quentin, Quentin was able to come to, to my house for a little while today and he, he was looking around and goes, so this is it, huh? <laughs> I'm like, I, I showed him, I showed him to my kitchen where we have, a, 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 a well, our dining room actually, yeah. and we just have one of those white, uh, tape fold out tables with a tablecloth. And I'm like, well, this is where I do my fulfillment. <laughs> and, then I, and then I took him to the garage, yeah. right? Which is, which is not air conditioned. And I said, here's it's, where the tower yeah. is. Right. Yeah. And then I brought Shoe him string. in here. And Shoe I said, string operation, man. Here's my Shoe office. String. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what's been done. Um, I'm watching the clock. I want to give Steve some of the last words. Steve, what's on the horizon for you? Um, you mentioned you've got your graphic novel, probably 2023. Um, any conventions? Where do people find you? Talk yourself up. We want to promote you. All right. Um, I think the next thing that I'm doing is on Sunday, I'm going to the Boise Comic Art Festival for um, I'm just stopping by to do um some sort of a panel thing. Uh, it's a drawing deal. I don't exactly know what it is. Um, <laughs> boys, and then, okay. You'll find out when you get there, I guess. Uh. I'm doing some stuff for Solid Comics. Um, and then um, I'm working on the, the graphic novel, Beast. Uh, I, I, ran, I think Roland's read the script for that. Um, it's, it's grown from the 24 pages you saw to like, I don't know, creeping up to 100 dish. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, wow. I've got, I've got like, yeah, about twelve pages or yeah, twelve pages of it done. So I guess, I guess uh, my twenty percent isn't even close. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I said twenty percent earlier, but yeah, I was optimistic. Well, you know, you're a creator. You can't do math. You can't do math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> math, math. I have many much pages done and the many much to right do. Now. I have about this many, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. Steve. Um, I I can't thank you enough for being here. You are always thank welcome you. back. You are mm-hmm. welcome. Like we were on, and folks, uh, if you're watching Wednesdays, Mondays, Sundays, we've got uh, three shows. We um, we are SilverlineComics.com. We have a Kickstarter campaign going right now. Go back that if you haven't. If you have, tell all your friends and thank you for backing that. Thank you for day- to Daytona Beach for all the love you gave us last weekend, and we can't wait till next year. Uh, I don't know if I'm forgetting yes. anything, Roland. <laughs> um, but uh, we we we. We appreciate all of you out there. Uh, spread the word. And um, Steve, great thing. Great, great, great time having you here. Um, Thank you. And when we, when we go, we always say, make mine make silver, 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 line. silver line. Good night, everybody. <laughs> make mine silver line. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And I'm going to, oh, wait, I'm terrible at this. Good night. Here's a closing bumper. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sergio Cariello. And make mine silver line.